Welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Sam Masters. I'm the campaigns coordinator with Protect Our Winners. Uh, protect Our Winners is a nonprofit that helps passionate people protect the places that we live and experiences we love from climate change. We are a community of athletes, scientists, creatives, and business leaders advancing nonpartisan policies that protect our world today for future generations. Thank you all for joining us here at Catamount today. Pow is truly grateful for Senator Welsh's leadership on climate and energy issues on Capitol Hill. And it's been an honor to work with him um, and his team to introduce the Energizing Our Communities Act, which we are here to discuss today. Before I pass it off to the Senator, I'd like to extend a huge thank you to our hosts here at the Catamount Outdoor Family Center, as well as our great brand partners like Burton that have supported this new proposal in Congress and are here with us today. So without further ado, I'd love to pass it off to Senator Welsh. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Um, thank you all for being at this beautiful Catamount. Mr. McCullough, my old colleague in Montpelier, we're so grateful to you and your family for uh, preserving this. And I always am astonished because we're like close to civilization here, but we're totally deep in nature. And you told me a couple of hundred geese every once in a while, if we're lucky, we'll fly in and say hello uh, at this every pond morning. back. <laughs> it's just amazing to be here. I'm so happy to be here with all of you. Um, we all know climate change is real. And that debate about whether it's real or not is long behind us. The big challenge that we have is how do we implement policies that make us uh, transition from a fossil fuel economy to a clean economy? And of course, there's lots of things that have to be done, including uh, creating new methods of transmitting clean energy from where it's produced, whether it's wind or solar, to where it's needed. And uh, my colleague, Annie Custer, a great skier, she's a representative from New Hampshire, fantastic uh, downhill skier. I beat her a little bit when it comes to cross country, uh, but I'm not bragging. Uh, she's really good at that and I'm okay at cross country. But uh, she and I uh, are proposing this legislation that is about uh, making it possible, more possible, to get the transmission capacity that is absolutely vital if we're gonna have clean energy be available to where energy is really needed. And there is significant funds that are available in the, in the IRA, the Infrastructure uh, Act, uh, and the Recovery Act. That money is available to basically help the building of transmission what our bill does is acknowledge that when there's a transmission line that may be going through your community, that is a, that's a challenge. That's a real issue that that community has to deal with. So how do we solve that? Well, what we're proposing is to have a fund that's created with a half a percent interest on the IRA funds that are available for transmission. And then the community that is gonna be the host of that part of the line has an opportunity to utilize money to be able to make decisions about how best to mitigate, how best to do their own resilience, how best to do their own uh, 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 access to clean energy. So basically it's about community empowerment and it's an acknowledgement that to do the transmission that is absolutely essential, we also have to acknowledge that there are impacts on communities that are hosting a transmission line and we want to give them a tool, financial tool, so that they can take steps that they decide to take that will help their community be stronger, to be more resilient and to improve their community. So this uh, effort uh, is all about working with Protect Our Winners that has been such an advocate uh, about the urgency of climate change and the urgency that we face to address it. And we all know what's happening. You know, the season here at Catamount, the season, the skiing season in Vermont was a lot uh, less than it was uh, in years past. Uh, and that's a threat to our economy. I mean, and it's also a threat to our way of life. You know, most Vermonters, they grow up skiing and uh, they don't, that's gonna be a distant memory. We don't want that to happen. Protect Our Winners uh, is uh, outdoor recreation folks across the entire country that are working together. And it includes 
uh, some high-profile Olympic uh, athletes who have contributed uh, their name and advocacy uh, to the effort that all of us have to engage in in whatever practical way we can to mitigate and reverse uh, climate change. So I'm delighted to be here uh, and to be the sponsor with my colleague Annie Custer of New Hampshire for uh, this legislation that's going to be helpful in building out that transmission that's all about getting clean energy from where it's produced to where it's going to be utilized. So thank you very much and thank you uh, Catamount for hosting us today. Next up, we have uh, Ashley Laporte, who is uh, the Vice President of Purpose and Impact at Burton. Hi, thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Hi, first I just want to say thank you to Protect Our Winners and thank you to the Senator for being here. Um, as you just heard, my name is Ashley Laporte. I'm the Vice President of Purpose and Impact at Burton Snowboards. We're here today to support the Energizing Our Community Act because we fully acknowledge the very urgent need for climate action. And we understand the pivotal role that clean energy plays towards building toward a healthy planet where all people can thrive. We're a company that believes that businesses need to do more than just turn a profit. We have a responsibility to contribute to finding and supporting solutions that address the climate crisis and that builds, build solutions towards a clean energy future. We support the Energizing Our Communities Act because it not only builds toward that zero energy carbon that zero carbon energy grid, but it also invests and empowers, in, empowers communities impacted by clean energy development. It's that dual investment, the infrastructure, the investment in communities that's vital towards building um, toward this future that we all wanna see. At Burton, we've long been committed to doing our part for the planet, whether that's addressing carbon intensive materials in our products um, or investing in clean energy solutions at our facilities. But we know that we alone can't tackle the scale of the crisis ahead of us. So we're really proud to support common sense solutions like the EOCA to help us build the infrastructure that we're going to need to move towards the future that we all wanna see. Um, we're really happy to be here today. Thank you. And next, we'd love to introduce one of our esteemed Alliance members, Blake, and also a guide at Mark Sent Out Mountain Guides. Uh, thank you so much for being here today, everybody. This is absolutely incredible. Um, yeah, so my name is Blake Keo. Uh, some of you might know me as a professional skier and guide for Senate Mountain Guides. Uh, additionally, I'm currently in graduate school earning a master's degree in clinical mental health uh, when there's no snow around, which is fun. Uh, however, today I'm here uh, wearing my favorite hat, and that is as an Athlete Alliance member for Protect Our Winners. Uh, it is truly an honor to be here representing POW and to enthusiastically express my support for the Energizing Our Communities Act. Um, as a skier who lives in a city that's better known for its commercial fishing uh, than it is its proximity to big mountains, I often get curious looks from my peers when I tell them what my profession is and then subsequently where home is. Typical questions include, where do you ski? How long is the drive? Do they really have avalanches on the East Coast? Yes. Um, and why are your edges so sharp? Because they need to be. Thank you. Um, however, at a recent dinner with some friends, I was caught off guard by a new question. Do you consider yourself a local here? Was this a challenge? Or perhaps the long-awaited invitation? My mind raced looking for the right answer, and then somewhere in the recesses of my brain, hidden among partial song lyrics and close enough cooking instructions, I recalled an answer Mike Rogie gave when asked a similar question. Quote, a local is anyone who gives back to their community. This deep sense of responsibility and reciprocity for the landscapes we explore and the communities that we become a part of is at the core of Protect Our Winners as an organization and the Energizing Our Communities Act. Since its inception, PAL has been committed to driving climate action, and that's exactly what we're doing with this bill. Whether it's in the halls of Congress, in a skin track, alongside, alongside a river, we are collaborating with a diverse range of partners and stakeholders to collectively support the EOCA. One of PAL's core missions is to bring the outdoor state together to make sure every single voice is heard by our elected rep representatives. In short, your voice matters. 
as we strive to rapidly and responsibly develop transmission infrastructure to meet our climate goals and expand renewable energy incentives in the IRA, it's imperative to address escalating electricity demands. Increasing transmission capacity becomes crucial in facilitating the transportation of electricity from clean energy sources directly to consumers. However, alongside this imperative, we must address a number of community concerns. Thus, the proposed bill aims to channel funds from the federal loan program back into the communities involved in the development of transmission lines, including, and importantly, tribal governments, and without imposing additional costs on the federal government. By prioritizing responsible development, we ensure that communities, including members of the outdoor state who will reside near these infrastructures, have a stake in the process and a clear voice in shaping future landscapes. The outdoor state embodies a commitment to advocating for responsible development that respects both communities and the natural environment. Today marks a pivotal moment for PAL as it unveils the Energizing Our Communities Act designed to address the climate crisis by promoting renewable energy adoption in rural areas that are transitioning away from fossil fuels. This legislation not only aims to make tangible improvements in communities embracing clean energy, but also and importantly focuses on fortifying infrastructure for long-term sustainability. With firsthand experience of the impacts of climate change, I can attest to the urgency of such initiatives in mitigating its effects. This winter, a friend's home was destroyed by unprecedented flooding. During it, and during that same storm, I sent urgent text messages to friends throughout New Hampshire, Vermont, and Maine to make sure they're okay. Then on January 13th, I watched the combination of three inches of rain, 60 mile per hour winds, and record-breaking high tides inundate communities up and down the Maine coast. Many of our neighbors are still recovering. Fortunately, there's hope because when we lend our voices in support of this bill, we directly contribute to shaping a future where clean energy and responsible development can coexist, thereby protecting both the places and the people that we cherish. Again, I cannot thank you enough for your time today. Let's join forces, embrace renewable energy, reinvest in our towns and neighborhoods, and pave the way for a brighter future together. Thank you. Next up, we'd love to invite Ted Brady, who's the executive director um, of Vermont League, League of Cities and Towns. Thanks so much. Yes. Well, thanks, and a real big thank you to Senator Welch for recognizing that our communities, municipalities across this country need help investing in our infrastructure, investing in our recreation infrastructure, investing in our water, sewer, roads. You go down a long list of things, our municipalities need help. There's not enough federal funding and not enough state or local funding available to solve our country's problems. And the Energizing Our Communities Act recognizes there's a nexus between these uh, transmission lines, the increasing distributed grid that we have, and the need to make investments in our communities. As I am a member here, uh, I ride down power lines right uh, across the road here. I'm like, boy, these transmission lines aren't exactly the most attractive thing. But you do recognize that they're giving to a greater good. But municipalities like Williston and others across the state, across Vermont, uh, have to put up with that stuff. And there's an appropriate place for there to be a partnership between the federal government, the state government, and the local government to host this, but also to invest in our communities and recognize that there is some level of disruption when we're going to this new grid. And in order to protect our winters, in order to protect places like this, uh, it takes resources and it takes a lot of them. You know, it took a couple million dollars of federal, state, and local uh, tax dollars to make this place exist in Williston and continue to exist in Williston, hopefully forever. And uh, this bill, thanks to Senator Welch, we hope this bill uh, is, is going to make places like Catamount, uh, more prevalent, community forests, more prevalent across Vermont and across America, and give us a new source of funding to make that happen. It's a really neat partnership to recognize that our future energy needs are directly tied to our municipal needs and what our residents in a town like Williston uh, uh, demand and expect of their government. So uh, on behalf of the Vermont League of Cities and Towns and my uh, affiliate organization in D.C., the National League of Cities. Uh, we're really excited about this opportunity and uh, look forward to helping uh, Senator Welch turn this thing into law. Thanks a lot, Senator. 
Sweet. We'd love to introduce uh, Dr. Kimberly Coleman, PhD, an associate um, uh, professor of Parks and Recreation at UVM. Thank you so yeah, much. Of course. Hi, everyone. I'm Kim Coleman. I'm an associate professor of Parks, Rec, and Tourism in the Rubenstein School at the University of Vermont. I'm also a Williston resident, a member here at Catamount, and I'm on the Conservation Commission here in Williston. So I was involved with the conservation of this property. Um, I think we've heard from a lot of the previous speakers about the impact that climate change will have on our winters here in Vermont and throughout the Northeast. There's, there's great evidence that we're going to be looking at wetter, warmer winters that will result in the flooding that we just heard talked about and less snow, so an impact to our winter recreation economy. And of course that includes skiing, but it's also going to include other types of recreation like ice fishing and snowmobiling. And we're already starting to see the impacts of that change, right? So colleagues of mine at UVM have demonstrated that snowmobiling, for example, will be particularly vulnerable. But there are still a lot of questions that we don't know the answer to. So I'm proposing work with colleagues to look at how the changing recreation landscape will impact how people connect to the places that they live and recreate, how it will change how they recreate with their friends and family members. And there's just a lot of unanswered questions in this space. And so I was really excited to read in this legislation that there's provisions to support workforce development and workforce training because we're going to need the best brightest minds to try to answer these questions and solve these problems and so i really um I'm, I'm really excited that senator welch had the vision to include that and the provision for conservation in this legislation and i hope that as a community we can all come together and think about what these changes are going to mean for vermont and create a more resilient future thank you Next up, uh, John Atkinson, director of Catamount Outdoor Family Center. Yeah. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the uh, Catamount Outdoor Family Center and the Catamount Community Forest. Uh, I'm John Atkinson, the executive director of the nonprofit Outdoor Center here. Uh, the Catamount Outdoor, Outdoor Family Center was founded in 1978 by the McCullough family. Thank you, Jim and Lucy. <laughs> um, and first as a cross country ski area, then quickly moving into year round operations. Um, but still with winter as a primary focus and revenue producer here. In 2019, Jim and Lucy helped conserve nearly 400 acres of, of land in this incredible mix of forest and fields that were uh, around us here and trails and that would likely have been carved up into house sites if not for their work and sacrifice. This created the Catamount Community Forest, uh, which is now owned by the town of Williston and, and is public land. Um, and we're lucky that they uh, both still live right here and, uh, and can share their, their histories. Um, the story of climate change is, re is reflected in their struggles and, and now our struggles to uh, sustain an outdoor recreation center um, with year-round operations in Vermont. However, winter is still, uh, we, we like to think of it as our most important season. Um, there used to be reliable snow and cold weather in Chinden County, uh, but clear warming trends have significantly reduced the length and consistency of winter for us. The Catamount Outdoor Family Center is on the leading edge of warming for Vermont ski areas. We are uh, one of the lowest elevation centers in the state and we're further from the mountains and closer to Lake Champlain. Uh, we have had dry ground uh, this past winter in all months of the winter um, and uh, barely a month's total of skiing throughout. Uh, we were only able to uh, roll pack the snow a few times and really only groom it once and that one grooming was in the spring. Uh, after winter had officially ended uh, during a late March storm. And before that storm, we had dry frost-free ground here in March in Vermont. If anybody is familiar with when mud season usually happens in Vermont, it is not done in March. Um, so uh, mud season really is no longer even a thing for us. It's not a season, it cycles. We start in December and we end in March now. Um, so if we're looking for change uh, within our seasons, um, maybe, maybe we need a new song, right? We have a stick season song, we need a mud season. <laughs> um, but uh, so uh, l last winter wasn't uh, dramatically better for us either. And uh, even with the La Nina winter uh, predicted for 2025, uh, we can't really rely on winter as a source of, uh, of revenue any longer. Um, it is, uh, 
So the, the chances are too big that we will fail if we, uh, if we keep hoping that it will support us um, going forward and our trails, programs, camps, and clinics um, will, will uh, struggle because of that. Winter is no longer a promise for us. Um, it's a bonus at best. And uh, as we transition towards a more spring, summer, and fall-based revenue system, um, we have been further challenged by climate change. Uh, heavy rains fell here throughout uh, the summer and fall, um, and additional downpours during December caused uh, more damage here. Um, so the problem is not just warming, it's the inconsistency of the seasonal weather that um, also presents a major challenge. Um, we can call this just complaining about weather, but it's not only a few tough periods to whine about for us. Um, hearing Jim and Lucy stories about how things used to be not all that long ago um, and how they are starting to see it change really uh, help illustrate um, our predicament here. This legislation um, that helps reduce our carbon footprint and moves us towards a more sustainable future is vital for us and for, uh, for our neighbors and, and everyone around us. Um, I'd like to thank you all for coming today, and uh, please, if you have a few minutes before you leave, wander the trails and enjoy the place. Thank you. We would now love to welcome Jim and Lucy McCullough, founders um, of, uh, of Catamount. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. Yeah. Well, it is baseball season, so I can't help myself. I, I'm doing cleanup today, but we all know Senator Welch is the heavy hitter. <laughs> so, welcome, Senator. Good to be here. Oh, jeez. Thank you. POW, protect our winters. POW, prisoners of war. Please join me for a few seconds to honor those people around the globe who are prisoners of war and prisoners of political um, dictators. And think of their healthy, happy return soon to their families. Please join me for a moment. Okay, Jim, so why are you quoting Kermit the Frog? Well, Kermit says, it's not easy being green, but with climate change the way it is, everything being relative, it's getting easier and easier to be green. <laughs> and thinking of wildlife and keystone species, winter is the climate keystone in our planet. And yes, of course, for winter sports, please protect our winters. For the Arctic and Antarctic continents, please protect our winters. For the tundra, oh my, protect our winters. The boreal forest, the largest forest on the planet, protect our winters. It's shrinking and dying, along with all the critters that live there. For our glaciers, for the hot and dry areas, protect our winters. For the diminishing worldwide potable water life that sustains us as we stand here today, protect our winters. For all manner of plant and wildlife, for all our future generations, we must protect our winters. Today, we must adopt zero tolerance for the exceedance of 1.5 degrees Celsius as proposed in Paris. Protect our winters, protect our planet. Thank you, family. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>